Hello preppers, welcome to the channel, thanks for joining us. The last thing I ever wanna do is come across as a fear monger. I often, if not always, put information out that's practical things you can do to try to stave off any type of problems that may come our way. But occasionally something comes across the news or some type of event that may or probably may happen that can be cataclysmic and we have to address this, we can't bury our heads in the sand. So let's jump into this article and look to see what might be coming. From PowerMag.com, for people who work in the industry of power generation, their experts say 90% of the U.S. population could die if a pulse event hits the power grid. Pulse events include a large electromagnetic pulse, an EMP, or a geomagnetic disturbance. In case you didn't know, which you probably did, an EMP is a pulse generated from a nuclear detonation. However, we can actually make them now without a nuclear detonation, that's scary enough. And a geomagnetic disturbance is like a keratin event or a coronal mass ejection coming from the sun. And if that's not scary enough, there is a 100% certainty this will happen sometime in the future. And as many as nine out of 10 people in the US could die. And there are essentially two estimates on how many people could die from hunger, starvation, lack of water, social disruption, oh yeah, one estimate is that within a year or so, two-thirds of the U.S. population would die. The other estimate says that within a year or so, 90% of the U.S. population would die. We are talking about total devastation. We're not talking about just a regular catastrophe. No, we're not looking at your run-of-the-mill catastrophe. It's funny how they word that. But let me put it this way. I've talked about how an EMP event, prob in my opinion, probably not going to occur in the U.S. But a coronal mass injection, when we talk about something coming from, from the solar spot, this very well could happen and very well probably will happen. It's just a matter of when, but understand, keep this in mind as we go through the rest of the article that we're actually heading into a solar maximum 2024, 2025. And if it's going to happen, it's likely going to occur in the next couple of years. And the key for the geomagnetic disturbance, they are naturally occurring solar magnetic disturbances that disrupt the Earth's magnetic field, which in turn can induce currents on the electric grid that may simultaneously damage or destroy key transformers over a large geographic area. And I'll say briefly, understand that anything connected to those power grids, including your house, could easily have a massive current coming in causing fires. This is what happened in the past. And the largest event ever recorded, called the Carrington Event, occurred in 1859. This was during the pre-electric era. During that time, there were only long telegraph wires. There was no grid to bring down no pipelines, but even then it played havoc on the telegraph wires, burned up some telegraph offices, and understand today it would be much, much worse. It would be a collapse of society. In 1989 in Quebec, the grid collapsed in 93 seconds. There were 6 million customers without power for 10 hours. It was $1 to $2 billion in damage. And get this, it was only one-tenth the size of the 1921 event. Could you imagine what would that be like today if we got that Carrington event on our society now? And that's why they're looking at 90% of America would die. Again, the starvation and hunger, that's one thing we look at as far as preppers go, but the social unrest because of this. You've seen it's what it's like in cities, by the way, when they have a blackout for just three days. It's chaos. Could you imagine that across the entire country for years? People tend to think of it as science fiction. However, you know what? They don't want to think about it or worry about it because it's simply too terrible. And I'm all for recommendations to get through this. Their recommendations don't affect us. They could actually train and equip operators to try to shut down the grid if it happens. They could have neutral current blocking devices trying to stop it and have a system to actually alert the grid operators in case this comes about. Again, nothing that affects us specifically. What could we do in our home? Well, first off, having a Faraday cage, having a lot of important devices in the Faraday cage would be advantageous. But understand, even putting your cell phone in your Faraday cage, your cell phone may survive, but it's not going to connect to anything. We're looking at cell phone systems being down for probably years. The transformers to re that will blow because of this, they're looking at right now estimated three years or more to have them replaced. And you know that in your house, you're not going to be a priority. They're going to be looking at some of the hardcore military, industrial, even commercial systems long before you have it at your house. So I guess having a solar generator might, generator might be your, your best bet. I'll put a link below for a couple you might want to look at. But this is, this is the real thing, guys. This is probably, in my opinion, the, the scariest thing we have to deal with or face when it comes to being preppers. Even the social unrest part, of course, you need to be able to protect yourself as well. Let's get a discussion going for this in the comments below because I'll be honest with you, if there's anything that keeps me up at night, it's probably this. And for the fact that we're heading into a solar maximum, 
man, the next couple of years may be really frightening years coming about. But you know what? We don't want to bury our heads in the sand or pretend it's not going to happen. We need to try to face it and prepare. That's what we do. We prep so we don't live in fear. Thanks for watching.